welcome to this day one conversation. I'm Peter Wallace and with me today is the Reverend Dr. David J. Lowe's from Luther Seminary. David is the Marbury E. Anderson Chair in Biblical Preaching at the seminary. He earned two master's degrees from Lutheran Theological Seminary in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and a PhD from Princeton Theological Seminary. And he's the author of a new book, Making Sense of Scripture, published by Augsburg Fortress. David, thanks so much for being with us. My pleasure, Peter. Thanks for the invitation to be here. Preaching is your passion. You do it, you teach it, you write about it. How did that passion develop in you? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> I think I went to seminary uh, very eager to be a pastor mm -hmm. and fell in love with a couple subjects. I fell in love with uh, church history and the history of the Reformation and with biblical studies uh, and with systematic theology. And um, in time, those three uh, seemed to crisscross around preaching. And I found a little bit to my surprise that I really enjoyed preaching, not just the moment with the congregation, but the immersing yourself in the word mm -hmm. and attending both the text in front of you and the context of the people that would be listening to you and the, the possibility of God speaking anew in that interaction. So I've been kind of uh, in love with preaching ever since. Luther Seminary is becoming known for its rich resources for preaching, including the Center for Biblical Preaching, which you direct. What does that center do to help preachers? Originally, we brought the, or created the center to bring together all of the non-degree type offerings we had, a number of seminars and workshops, uh, to give it a home and to begin to create an identity. And we continue to do that. Each year there are countless continuing education events. But since then, we've also uh, moved in a couple of directions. We produce a variety of resources, some that are audio-based, are uh, in the company of preachers as a four times a year CD with 15 minutes of teaching on a particular aspect of preaching, and then a number of sermons that uh, illustrate or exemplify that, and really is intended to just be refreshment, even as much as can be an ed for pastors, for preachers. Um, a number of DVDs on preaching the Old Testament. We came out last year with a, a whole course, uh, basic introduction to, to biblical preaching. Um, we've also moved into the area of, uh, of the internet and the web. We have a, a, a free preaching resource called workingpreacher.org that has each week a uh, written commentary on the lectionary readings coming. It has each week a podcast where three biblical scholars or homileticians just uh, think through the text and sort of banter and wonder with each other what this might lead to for a sermon. That's called Sermon Brainwave. Um, and a number of other articles and resources, a number of video clips of great preachers to just inspire. And uh, you know, it started fairly modestly a year and a half ago. With, we've done very little advertising and we're now at about 100,000 hits a month. So it's been really received well and, and keeps growing. And I think part of that's the caliber. I think part of it is that it's free, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so, and that was really the, an act of ministry. I mean, it was our intention to, to serve the preachers of the church, so. And you're organizing the inaugural celebration of biblical preaching to be held this October at Luther Seminary. Tell us about that conference. Yeah, we're looking forward to this very much, so that in addition to, to the typical workshops and seminars, um, the web work we're doing, the resources, this, this is another area we're moving into, which is more of a a larger style conference and um, the hallmark of this will be the hallmark of, of, of all that we do really that what's distinctive is that it really tries to take very seriously the question of what happens to your preaching when you are committed to allowing your reading of scripture to shape every element from um, the content of the sermon of course but even delivery and the shape and form of the sermon and, and kind of continuing to make the argument that the more deeply you are immersed in the word, the more powerful your sermons are. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a couple of days in which we're bringing uh, four keynote speakers, Tom Long and uh, Haddon Robinson and some others trying to have a diversity of, of preaching voices there. But then uh, interspersed between their lectures, um, fabulous worship, and then a lot of workshops so that people who come can be in smaller groups also and, and focus on a variety of topics from preaching parables to preaching difficult texts to you know, any number of things. And then the day after, or really the, the sort of third to fourth day of the event, uh, we're gonna do a, a lectionary study. So sort of an overview of the whole lectionary for the coming year. It'll be the year of Luke in, in your C. 
and uh, folks can come for one or the other or uh, or for both and we hope we hope they do October's a good month to be in uh, St. Paul <laughs> Day One is proud to be a sponsor of this new event, and for those listening who may be interested about this conference for themselves or their pastors, what should they do? You uh, go to uh, workingpreacher.org, which is just www.workingpreacher.org. One of the four tabs at the top has uh, lifelong learning, and click that and it'll take you to a place where you can find information about the celebration. And you can also find a link at dayone.org. What do you think should be the end result of this kind of authentic biblical preaching in our congregations? Well, I, I've been working a lot recently on um, where preaching or when preaching does not connect. Mm. And I, I hear a lot about that. <laughs> you know, when someone's unhappy with their pastor or sermon they heard, they often will write the seminary president oh. and with a kind of complaint. And typically those get it forwarded to me with a note at the top from our president which says something like, do something about this. <laughs> 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 Fix the preaching of the church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think, I think what happens often is that preachers read texts and they're thinking about a message. What's the idea or message I can find to communicate? Mm -hmm. I think hearers, believers, come to church wanting not primarily something to think about, which is fine. Mm -hmm. They want something to happen. They want something to touch their heart. And as I have been away from the parish and am now more frequently in the pew than in the pulpit, I, I get that. I mean, I, I am the same way, that I come to church and, it's, and I want something to happen there. I want my heart to be broken open uh, to a sense of God's mercy and love. I think that the task is to immerse yourself in scripture, not to find an age-old idea, but to be open to being encountered by the living God. And that expectation that God still speaks, that God still meets us in the word, is what allows preaching to be something that happened, mm. to, to be an event or to be eventful. One of the goals of this conference is to help preachers and teachers move from the world of the Bible to the world of today. That's a big jump, and it's one that lay people especially may have a little trouble understanding. But why do we even need to know about the background of the Bible that was written so many thousands of years ago, half a world away? How, how can it be relevant to our lives today? Well, I think that's the, the primary challenge. Anytime someone thinks about opening the Bible, uh, why? Why would you do that if it doesn't speak? And I think that that's the art of preaching, is both the taking the time to do your homework, to understand the context, but then to sort of leave all that homework behind. And what you bring to the pulpit isn't geography or history or archaeology. What you, what you bring with you is a, enough of a story that people can imagine that story continues, that the story speaks to them. Um, I like to say I th what I think about is awesome about the Bible is that it begins in the very beginning in Genesis, that it ends at the very end in Revelation, mm -hmm. and that we all find ourselves somewhere between the Acts of the Apostles and Revelation, mm -hmm. that this story is, is meant to uh, include us and, and envelop us in this ongoing story of God and the people of God. Um, but that story has to be meaningful for us to find ourselves in it, and that's what we do in preaching. David Lowe's, thank you for being with us. My great pleasure. Thank you.